During World War II, the Nazis' most classified project was known as Die Glock, the bell. Secret documents found years later reveal that the bell was a new kind of exotic energy technology that could affect time and defy gravity. In 1939, the Nazis set up a secret base in Antarctica known as New Schwabia. Starting in 1945, Operation Paperclip secretly brought hundreds of Nazi scientists into America, where they were hired by the military industrial complex. In 1946, Admiral Richard Byrd led a military expedition known as Operation High Jump to seek out Nazi base New Schwabia and other Antarctica bases. On his way back to the US, Admiral Byrd told Chilean newspaper El Mercurio that in the event of a new war, the US would be facing military craft that can fly from one pole to the other with incredible speed. In 1959, a dozen nations signed the Antarctic Treaty, making it illegal for anyone to travel south of the 60th parallel without government permission. Since then, curious videos have circulated that show what appear to be Nazi UFOs. And just last Monday, Dr. Stephen Greer introduced Antarctica whistleblower Eric Hecker. In 2010, I was selected to go down to the South Pole Station in Antarctica for an entire year by Raytheon Polar Services as an employee of a third-party contractor for the National Science Foundation. I function in a dual role capacity as a tradesman and a firefighter. My responsibilities required me to be more informed than most of my crew and offered me complete access to the facilities. What I learned from this unique experience needs to be shared with the entire world. The technology at the South Pole Station certainly can do what it is presented as its primary purposes, and unfortunately, much more. The Ice Cube Neutrino Detector is presented as a passive listening device for the purposes of the science as presented. But I'm going to skip right through the chase, folks. Uh, I have provided documentation that proves that the 5,160, what they call DOMs, that are embedded in the ice can actually transmit at 2,047 volts each. That gives us a long list of things to consider. It is effectively a multifaceted directed energy weapons platform that I will uh, list rapidly a few things that it can do. Vehicle detection. We're learning that these off-world craft, on-world craft, ours or other nations are also emitting neutrinos. So this makes the South Pole Station effectively an air traffic control station for this new level of equipment that nobody's discussing. In addition to the ability to detect neutrinos and the exotic vehicles, I have provided documentation that shows that this is also a system for faster than light communications. In the past, Gary McKinnon has hacked NASA, found the off-world fleet, the list of captains, and it's apparent that if we have faster than light vehicles moving throughout the system, we're gonna need faster than light communications. This is that facility. Unfortunately, I have other bad news. The season that I was there, 2010 to 2011, we converted from uh, construction to operations and maintenance in both the elevated station and the detector array. Unfortunately, when they first fired it up, that was when we had the earthquakes in Christchurch, New Zealand. There was two incidental shots before they were able to target it correctly. This is an earthquake generating device as well. This is the weapons of war that we have to deal with now and what Raytheon's hiding. There's an ELF system at the South Pole Station that when I was arrived, I was told it was off, dismantled, and completely defunct. In my work, I will rapidly just tell you, I had to figure out the circuitry for certain other repairs, and I found that this system is in fact completely energized, up and running, and being utilized with the other systems for nefarious purposes as well. The Atmospheric Research Observatory is uh, in what we call the clean air sector. I witnessed myself a very powerful green laser shooting out of the top of this facility into the cosmos. This, I believe, is a secondary form of long-range communications and or a defense system. A question of power comes into play for all of these facilities that are present. I assure you, I knew what was going on, I knew the load demands of the facility, and all of these new items exceed the demand for the systems that I was presented. I am doing due diligence and research. I believe there is either a secondary power supply there that is either nuclear, that uh, was there prior to the start 
of the Antarctic Treaty, which prohibits such things, and or that there is some sort of exotic uh, power supply system there that just is not in the verbiage of the treaty, so it negates the responsibility to the parties involved.